Hello, welcome back. Uh, we have, again, bought some books. We're book buyers. What, book, what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? Uh, so we want to talk about a few books that we have acquired here in Peru. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit different than our, our normal haul that we bring from the States, so we wanted to talk about a few of them. Yep. Uh, so it's a mix between stuff we've gotten in Lima and in Arequipa. Right. Uh, but I'll start with a book-related item just really quick. Um, there was a book fair here in Arequipa, so we got a couple of really pretty bookmarks. Um, by famous artists. Yeah. So, I think they're nice. Fun times. Yeah. And you go ahead. And yeah, I guess I'll a, start. Yeah. Uh, so I got uh, a book from a store in Lima called El Vire, which we've talked about in previous episodes. And I'll I'll link all the bookstores that we've gotten things at. We put in our Lima bookstore tour or something like that. So I'll link the video down below. Yep. Yep. This one is by Raúl Porras. Uh, and it is called El Nombre del Peru, which is the name of Peru. Uh, he talks a lot about kind of some of the major changes that have happened in Peru uh, over over the last uh, over the decades encompassing the 20th century. And it's in Spanish. Right? And it's in Spanish, right? It's a it's a smaller uh, book, and so I'm hoping that it won't be too difficult for me. But um, I'm curious about it. It's it's got a lot of awards, and it's a, a well known title here in Peru. So my next book um, I got at Carolee Libros, and I'll link the store's Facebooks or websites down below as well. Um, so it's by Benjamin Alire Sainz. Sainz? Sainz. Sainz. Um, it's Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. So this is a YA contemporary, which I don't typically read. But I'm really interested, and everyone has said that this is really good. So it's about... Two um, Mexican American boys, Aristotle and Dante, and they are are gay, and it's kind of their story about their their individual struggles and what they're struggling with personally, um, and also their relationship. Um, although it's not relationship heavy, is what I understand. So I'm actually really interested to read this. Um, it's supposed to be really good, and it's supposed to be a really good representation of the LGBTQ community. So. Hmm. Um, it's won a lot of awards, if you can see um, on the cover here. Mm -hmm. So it should be, should be good. Uh, my next one is from one of my new favorite authors, uh, Maria Vargas Llosa. Uh, I don't know a lot about this book, but I've seen it everywhere. This is a, a Spanish version, so I'm excited to to compare that in like the writing style, like the translator, basically, uh, from mm -hmm. when I read um, uh, Who Killed Palomino Molero. And um, that was in a previous book haul that we will put right. down below as well. So this one is in Spanish. So this is straight from the horse's mouth, if you will. Um, what's it called? It's called Los Jefes Los Cachorros. Uh, cachorros is like puppies. Ah, oh, cute. So I don't know. I don't know. It, it's probably figurative because it's, it's yeah. Yosa. Um, so I have no idea what this is about. So it'll be a surprise. Uh, so my next book I also got at Carolee Libros. Um, and it's one that I've been meaning to pick up for a while, so it's been out for a long time. Um, it's, I think there's four books in the series. This is the first one. It's by Maggie Steve Otter. Um, it's The Raven Boys from the Raven Cycle series. So I have read a previous um, series by Maggie Steve Otter. I can't remember what it was called, but I wasn't super keen on it. But this one is supposed to be really good, so it's um, about... A magical school because you know I like it but it's it's supposed to be really character driven and super atmospheric so um, it's supposed to be like a really good book to read in the fall because well it's not a scary book the the writing is supposed to be so well done that it's just really creepy, and the creepiness builds and builds and builds hmm. until it all comes to a head at the end of the book, and then there's three more after this one. So um, hmm. I'm really interested. So what month is it right now? Uh, it's July. July. But this probably will be going up in probably next month. August. So in time for Halloween, uh, if you want to read something kind of creepy but not scary, um, pick it up. I'm really excited. 
So my next one is uh, pretty standard fare for learning about the history of Peru. So this is The Lost City of the Incas by Hiram Bingham. And he is the, we'll call him the European explorer that rediscovered or um, began excavation or began um, uncovering the site of Machu Picchu after uh, the collapse of the Inca with the arrival of the Spanish. So this is kind of his his account of um, what it took to reach this site um, after it had been abandoned and a little bit of the history of the Inca, why they built these kinds of outposts around the mountains and his experience with um, the locals as he quote unquote discovered Machu Picchu. So uh, this is a very old account. This is from the 40s, 1940s. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm curious to see kind of the writing style and how kind of the the anthropology of the site was covered. I think we got that at Elector here in Arequipa um, and we'll link a website or Facebook down below because it's actually I, th I think it's one of the best bookstores in Arequipa. For sure it is. So. For sure it is. Uh, so my next book Clint and I have both read um, and I think we got it at Elector as well. Yes. So it's Peruvian Myths and Legends, and it's compiled by Fernando Rosas F. Uh huh. So this was really interesting to me because I really like the mythology around what shapes a society. Right. And so there are some really interesting little tidbits. It's got a ton of different little stories right. um, that helped shape the Peru that we live in today. Um, however, I will say either the translation or the writing, probably the translation. Probably the translation's pretty rocky. Yeah, so it it was good, but you really have to get through... You have to look past the translation. Yeah, <laughs> just go with the story, Right. Um, look past the translation, but it was really interesting, and there were a few little stories where I was like, that makes a lot of sense. Right. So... I would recommend this for anyone interested in the culture of Peru because it really does help show right. how, it, how it was shaped. Right. So. This one caught my eye because I don't know if you, if you know this or not, but I love maps. Um, so this one has a really, really pretty map from, it looks like probably the early 1800s on it. This is by uh, Carlos Oli Oliveira. It's Cuadernos, Cuadernos de Navigación. So, notebooks of navigation, navigation notebooks. It's poems in Spanish um, of this gentleman's travels around Latin America by boat, uh, as far as I understand it. And they're, they're, all, they're all fairly short. Yeah, they're all, they're all very short. Um, and I've only read a few of them, but they're really gorgeous. And um, this author clearly had a very um, strong love of traveling and of the places that he visited. And so I'm, I'm curious to, to read through these. But mostly the cover is beautiful. That's what caught my eye. It would be a nice uh, thing to sit on the coffee table. So my last book is really exciting. I have been wanting this for months. <laughs> um, and I finally broke down on my most recent trip to Lima. So I purchased it at Comunitas in San Isidro, Lima. And of course, what would a book haul be complete without J.R.R. Tolkien? It's La Ultima Canción de Bilbo, or The Last Song of Bilbo. Um, so it's the the poem that Tolkien wrote about Bilbo moving on. And it's a kid's book, admittedly, but it's gorgeous. It's got really nice illustrations by Pauline Baines. And it's just such a nice copy. So it's all in Spanish. Um, but it has, you know, one verse per page with really nice illustrations. Mm. Um, but then in the back, there's also an English translation. So mm. I've already read this through once, but I have a feeling it's going to be something I'm going to keep reading through because since it's poetic, um, there's a lot of really good Spanish vocab and, and adjectives in here. Um, and it's just so pretty. So I, I'm really excited about it. And my last one, I am so excited about. I'm reading it right now. I'm I'm a little bit in. Um, this is a recommendation from my good friend Jeff Babula, uh, who brought Yuval Noah Hariri to my attention. So this is Sapiens. This is the first in a in a. I believe it's just a two book series. It might be three coming out soon. Sapiens, 
um, a brief history of man of humankind. Um, this is wonderful. Um, Jeff had said, you know, upon recommending this, you know, if this would challenge your ideas or or make you think differently about some aspect of the history of mankind and how that affects things going on now today, the challenges that we have today. It's just fascinating. I absolutely love it. I can't put it down. I'm I'm going to blaze through it, I'm sure. And he's a an anthropologist. Yes, I believe so. And just the the way that he frames the history with the contemporary kind of um, consequence or maybe maybe the past consequences of things happening in the in the in the development of of of, of humans on earth uh, is really fascinating and it's a great book to read after Guns, Germs and Steel by uh, Jared Diamond, I think. Uh, though I'm not uh, more than a quarter of the way through, but it's just gorgeous. It's it's um, beautifully printed and it's got um, color 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 images. It's just a, a beautiful, beautiful copy. So I'm really, really enjoying this one. So that's all we have. Um, but as always, um, I will link any Goodreads links down below so you can check them out and see what all these books are about. Um, but that's it. So. I'm sure there will be another book haul coming at some point, um, whether it be from the U.S. or from Peru. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we will wrap it up and see you in the next video.